Sounds only mine. Hey everybody, um, my name is Yoni Vordensky. I, um, I live in the first city of Melbourne, Australia. I, I've been working as a software developer for almost 20 years now, in the last six or seven years, specifically in the big data areas. Hey guys, uh, my name is Yal Benifli. Uh, I've been working as a software developer for about 10 years. After two beers, I uh, can start to remember that. And uh, I've been working in the big data field as a consultant for the past three or four years. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, let's start. So both me and me have been consulting for big data companies or, or companies that want to do big data for the past few years. And uh, we've discovered some uh, uh, interesting uh, differences when talking about data platforms uh, from what we know as software developers. Um, so we, we understand there are basically two types of people when working with data and data processing systems. Uh, there are basically two archetypes of, of people. Well, there's uh, data people, uh, scientists, uh, that usually or traditionally work in the data field, working with their own tools, working with their own uh, way of thinking and own methodologies. Um, they have exploratory, exploratory workloads uh, that tend to, to be more interactive, the need to, to fill around with the data and fill it and, and get the sense of, of what's the data and, and what's in there. Uh, and they have their own tools. And usually those comes with a, a simplistic UI to help them investigate the data. The other types of people that we see in the data uh, processing, uh, working with data, our software engineers, this is kind of, of an invasion of software engineers because when we started for the past 10 years or so working with Hadoop, working with Spark, working with big data platforms, we saw that software engineers need to work on the data and, and everyone needs to, to coexist in the, over the same data platforms. And software engineers come with their own tooling and their own way of thinking about uh, deployment uh, and we're used to do things differently. We used to do, uh, um, have different methodologies from going from development to staging to production, using testing, using uh, continuous integration, and other automation tools. Um, trying to, to let these two teams or, or uh, have di multiple disciplinary teams working together is not a simple task. This is something that we saw uh, a lot of times in, in many companies. Um, so we know about scaling data platforms, we know about scaling uh, frameworks, but we, we hardly ever think about scaling the, the way of doing things, scaling the, the methodology of, of the organization. Um, scaling big data teams is hard, it's very hard, because we're used to do things differently. Um, <clears throat> so we see uh, uh, several uh, points that become hard to, to let data people work with data and software engineers work with data. And we see that when we're talking about technologies, different technologies, different languages, different way of looking at things, different needs. And we see it uh, uh, when talking about data, when software engineers and, and data scientists need to work on the same data sets, they want to do things differently with it. And we obviously see a lack of tools to do those tasks. Coming as a, as a software developer, um, we've been working really hard for the past few years on improving our way of doing things when uh, we're dealing with code, with dealing with application. We've come up with this enormous word con called continuous delivery or continuous integration that helps us connect our code to a, 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 a repository or source uh, control system and then moving the code using those systems to production, to staging, and testing it uh, um, with automatic processes. Okay, so uh, no drinking in English for you. Uh, <laughs> so um, what we found ourselves is, is basically at the point that, that we want to have the same practices of continuous deployment and DevOps in our big data environment. And um, we found that 
there are absolutely no tools to uh, integrate the workload between data engineers, data scientists, and, and, and ops. Um, one of the biggest challenges was to actually test the complete pipelines that we built. If we're looking at the um, latest two projects I've been working on, there was a, a feature engineering pipeline that was built by engineers, and then machine learning modeling and, and statistic analysis and all those things, and, and just integrating everything and having tests on top of that was just impossible. Um, in addition to that, we also have um, our own constraints. We're working on Hadoop clusters. We have things like Yarn and, and other things that prevent us from using um, tools that we could use in other scenarios like uh, Docker images and so on. And, and we wanted to add continuous integration and continuous delivery and, and found ourselves either handcrafting a lot of scripts to do everything and wasting a lot of time on maintaining work that that in the in the other world, the DevOps world, would, would just use products. Um, so if we look at, at, at this diagram, um, this is what we know from DevOps, right? That's the, the the area between developers and operations and having that collaboration between those two, uh, two different mindsets. Uh, we look at it now as something given, but there were clashes at the beginning. DevOps didn't come to the world naturally and it wasn't easy and it wasn't like, oh sure, I'll automate everything with Chef because Ruby is cool and I'm <laughs> an ops guy. Uh, it took some work and, and we built that culture. Um, so now between developers and, and ops, we have DevOps. If, if we look between developers and, and data scientists, there's, there's a bit of confusion. Uh, we can say yes, we did single value decomposition in uni. Uh, yes, regression, right. Um, the, the fun part comes when, when a data scientist tries to deploy something to production. That's, that can lead to the unraveling of uh, space-time continuum and possibly destruction of the whole universe. So um, we found, our, found ourselves with this problem. Uh, by the way, true story, we had uh, one, of, one of the times that I realized that we need to end this was when we had a data scientist that wanted to uh, deploy, deploy his R script to production. The way that we worked, the way that ops worked for the organization we were working with, basically everything was EMR steps, we were working with EMR, Clusters would just spin up, do all the steps, and shut down. And this poor data scientist tried to catch uh, EMR clusters as they're running just to deploy his work. That's when I realized there's something fundamentally broken here, and we need to have some sort of tools to, to integrate with these guys as well. Um, so, so, how do we do this in the big data world? Okay. Um, First of all, we needed to address the gaps that we saw. The first gap that was very obvious was the lack of source control tools. If we use source control tools for, for I've been using them since forever, since I started developing code professionally 20 years ago, it's almost non-existent in this world, in the data analyst, in the BI world, it just simply doesn't exist. So we wanted something that, that enforces the use of source control. Um, another thing that, that was very important for us was a way to test and do integration tests. Okay, we have the capability to test uh, components in Spark. Spark is actually built for unit tests. But once we look at the whole pipeline that integrates using data and, and files on disk, that becomes very difficult to test. Um, we also wanted to have some sort of a, a store to package and publish our application to, okay? And we needed something simply, simple. Um, we wanted to have a, a configuration repository, as we do in modern applications. Um, and we also tried, and, and for some extent are doing that, a way to deploy the, the clusters themselves. Okay, we wanted a way to deploy our Spark clusters at the beginning and whatever we'll, we'll use at, at the future. Um, so basically, this is this is it. This is what we as software developer uh, uh, want. We we want.
want to automate everything. That's something we learned a long time ago. Let's automate all the things. Let's automate our, our deployment, our installations, our uh, integration. We want to automate everything. And when talking about big data, we simply found ourselves writing lots of code to do the same tasks. Now, I mentioned we were consultants. When you're a consultant, consultant, you basically solve the same problem over and over again for all types of companies. So uh, when we thought about uh, Amaterasu, we, we thought about how to solve this problem one and for, one and for all. Um, that's the yeah. right part. Yes. Uh, Demi promised that this will be uber geeky and will not let you down. So um, Amaterasu is the Shinto goddess of sun. More importantly, it's a superpower in the anime series Naruto. Uh, and Amaterasu started three years ago as a completely different project and back then the idea was to have uh, some sort of resiliency for Spark driver programs. Right? Spark has built-in resiliency in the RDDs and based on that data frames and data set but if your driver program fails then you lose your context and everything goes to hell. Um, that is no longer really a big issue because A, we have other tools that, that give us that and B, we learn how to write better Spark code. Um, but out of that experience when Amaterasu was built three years ago in a completely different mindset, uh, one of the things that uh, um, we thought about was how to deploy those, uh, those data pipelines and looking at what was existing, which was back then Uzi and Azkaban, we realized that we need better tools to deploy. So we took those concepts and we took what we think is a very cool name. So Amaterasu today, completely different, um, is, a, um, is a way to build pipeline from potentially multiple frameworks. Right now we're supporting Spark. That was the framework we decided to prove uh, Amaterasu with. There, um, I'll talk towards the end about where we're going and the next versions. There are already discussions there. We have a, 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 one of the Apache Beam contributors looking into contribute Beam support into Amaterasu. Um, support for multiple languages, that is actually something that will come in the next version. And those multiple languages will be Scala, which is the first language we supported, Python, R, and SQL. Um, we have simple workflows within Amaterasu. We'll talk about that. And the whole concept is having a simple tool to deploy our big data pipelines. Um, a couple of months ago, I had a discussion with, with, with this company. And, and after we explained Amaterasu, they said, you know what? We understand it, but you really need to, to find one line to explain what Amaterasu is. And I told him, oh, it's, it's like NPM for big data pipelines. <laughs> you should have asked for it in the beginning. And, and NPM influenced a lot of the thinking behind Amaterasu, and, and I think it shows a little bit. We also have resiliency in the execution of the big data pipelines right now because we're using Mesos and we're getting that out of the box. Um, and we also have the concept of multiple environments, which allows us to support dev, test, production, and whatever you feel like. A uh, couple of works, words on why Mesos. First of all, I kept this slide, although next version is planned to run on Yarn as well. We started with Mesos because we felt that Mesos is the way to go. We still do feel that Mesos is the way to go, by the way. Um, but Mesos also gave us a couple of very interesting attributes. It gave us um, the ability to deploy Spark clusters as part, part of the job and configure them and, and, and actually add that piece of ops into Amaterasu. Um, but, um, um, but we get more and more demand to, to use Yarn. We also learned that Mesos actually gives us really awesome APIs to develop Amaterasu. A lot of the things that we now deal with Yarn are things we didn't need to think about when we developed the first uh, version with Mesos. So if you're running Mesos, um, you can use Amaterasu today, although it's not a production ready uh, version. If you're not using Mesos, I urge you to actually look at Mesos because it's really it's awesome. Uh, so, so I'm talking about uh, Amaterasu repositories. Um, we basically 
try to, to fit everything that we've talked about into one repository, one place that we can have everything that we need to move the, the data pipelines from uh, uh, development to t testing and to production. Uh, so currently it's implemented on Git repositories. In the future we'll also support tarballs and, and uh, every other way we, we would find uh, a need to. It, it's just important to uh, to say that repository is, is the package. It's the unit of fork from Terrasso or the unit of pipeline from Terrasso. Uh, uh, thank you for that. Um, and, and basically in that repository we, we need to have this uh, uh, YAML file that basically will describe the, the pipeline. What we want to run, uh, what's the input, what's the output, and we'll see that shortly. We have a, a source folder for, for all our scripts and all our uh, uh, Spark uh, uh, Scala scripts or, or Python or whatever. Okay. Sorry? Never mind. Uh, and then we have an environment folder for all our configuration. So we can have there uh, different files for different configuration environments. We have one for development, one for testing, production, whatever you want. And then there's the dependencies when we, where we want to put all our dependency uh, uh, libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Metplotlib, whatever you want. Um, the benefits of using Git are pretty obvious. So you have a rich ecosystem that allows for tooling and branching and, and different teams working on different parts of the project and you can use that uh, benefit as well. Um, so this is the YAML file. Basically, it's, it's described the, the, the flow that you want to run. You have your actions that uh, uh, you have named actions and you have a specific file that's color that will do the job. That's the uh, name of the, the flow. And you have error handling for different types. So if you have an error running some step, you can uh, catch that and, and use that uh, in different uh, uh, handle, error handling. So, um, I don't have a lot of slides about what's coming in the next version, but one of the changes that we've done is actually adding these exports, and this will allow you to um, state what data structures you want Amaterasu to share between different tasks. Okay, so right now we can export RDDs and data frames. We are looking at how this will look when we have different frameworks and we need to integrate between them. But that's already a bit that is in the works for the next version. And that leads me to um, to the next point, which is a bit confusing. We have a workflow engine. There are a lot of workflow engines out there and uh, some of them are pretty awesome. And we are not planning or we didn't plan to compete with them. We thought about this as a simple way to just pipe different applications and if you need something more complex then use Airflow or some other tool which is less awesome than Airflow. Next month we will talk about Airflow and the region. Um, and we actually, um, we have by the way a Slack channel where we do all our dis design discussions and everyone can, can join. I'll give you the details at the end. And we actually started discussing how we'll integrate different framework for workflows. Either we do it as different actions and have an airflow action that runs an airflow uh, workflow or having this DSL as a way to uh, implement whatever you want on, on the back end. But what happened in the last couple of weeks is that we actually, uh, some of the larger organizations that started looking at Amaterasu actually told us, um, you know what? We actually need something simple and something that we don't want to deal with installing Airflow and we don't want to deal with installing Luigi. Um, if you can just keep that and support that also without any other backend, we want to use that. So we're rethinking everything and the more we get people trying to use Amaterasu and giving us feedback, we think uh, we rethink the things that we do. So it's not a workflow engine. We don't intend to build a full-blown workflow engine, but uh, we might end up doing that. Um, so basically, when we're talking about the, the DSL, we, we basically want currently support Spark, and basically want to keep you just doing that, just 
using plain old Spark. We have a, a few differences, so uh, we don't want you to, to use your own Spark contacts or, or, or data frame. We, we just have a, an AMA context, and then we can, from that, use a Spark context, SQL context as you need. Uh, when dealing with data frames or RDDs that are generated in one step, you can still use them in a different step. You just have to, to we already persist those RDDs in those collections, and we just, you, you can get those references by just using get data from or get RDD. Yeah. That basically ties back to the exports. So when you export a data frame or an RDD, this is how you get it from downstream actions. Okay, so as your designated speaker, I'll continue. So if we look at, a, at this simple DSL, this is a very basic Spark application. Um, we have um, our Spark code. We're just creating an, an array, doing using Spark context to access. Yeah, I'm a context to use to access the Spark context. By the way, you don't need to do that. You can use SC directly. It will be loaded into your environment. Uh, we did that because we have a contributor who works, works for ThoughtWorks and he wanted to have uh, strong typing uh, and, and intelligence and we felt that this will help him come out of the cult environment, so we added that. Uh, and, and basically that gives you just access to Spark context and SQL context on this end, on this, uh, um, uh, on this action. If you go downstream to our next action, you can see that uh, we can access those same RDD and data frame. Uh, by the way, it's missing a 2DF, so let's just imagine that we <laughs> did a 2DF here. So we can use AMA context to access, and this is the name of the action and the name of the data structure. And the whole idea of having the exports in the YAML is that as someone that writes an action in whatever tool you want, you don't have to open someone else's code. You can look at that YAML and declare it there. You know, oh, I have uh, I have something called uh, bank accounts, and I can you know, look at people's bank accounts. There's something <laughs> completely more like that. Back to the NSA discussion. Yes. Um, so that's the action DSLs, and. Um, the last feature I'll show in slides, I'll show you another couple of features uh, in code in a moment, uh, is environments. And environments basically is a way to, uh, um, to have configuration. Right now, environments are uh, built in a JSON file. Uh, the reason for that is not really, really great. It's because we thought about externalizing those into a document database or something like that. We are going to support YAML in the next version. Um, and we have basically a key value that you can use for to store your configuration. There are some configurations that um, we kind of promote. So the first thing is the Spark Master URI. Okay, this is what we need to create the, the Spark context. And the reason for that is that you might have an environment for test, for for dev, for uh, uh, for production, and you have different masters for those. Um, we also have uh, something called input and output path, which basically allows us to have different input to our pipeline in, even, in every environment. That's the first kind of integration test piece that we built into Amaterasu. We'll talk later about what we're planning for the future, but you're going to have your input and output paths for every environment. Uh, working there, which is basically where we persist the data between to different actions, um, and that's it. This is how it looks right now. We're going to look very similar in, next, in the next version as the environment, either JSON or YAML. And we have here things like, uh, this is the production JSON, and we have the master URL, and we have the input path, which is uh, our HDFS prods. Uh, and name node, and we have uh, our output path that also goes to the same HDFS. And working there, we're doing into Alexio, which is something that currently we're testing Amaterasu against. Um, and here we have just key values. So, for example, we're just uh, uh, storing uh, Cassandra connection host and the table that we're going to access in Cassandra in our yes. 
So actually, rolling the RDDs between jobs is the, done on, uh, via Alexia, right? It's done Alexia. via, um, so it can be done via every uh, file system that Spark and the, the rest of the frameworks will support uh, can access. Alexio actually needed some additional work and we're still testing if it works well. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also looking at Apache Ignite. Mm -hmm. Um, but yes, we'll persist it somewhere to share the... the yeah, because the, the context probably goes up and down. Yes. Because of that, so you need a persistency um, layer. It's a great question. Context, uh, we actually store per executor. So if your executor run multiples, multiple uh, 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 actions, because they just happen to fall on the same executor um, he was available, they'll actually use the same context, but we can't count on it. And, and that's one thing that, that we actually don't have a good slide for. Amaterasu is a distributed system. It runs as a Mesos framework right now, and it will run uh, in the near future as a, as a YARN framework. So basically every action is, is executed on whatever node it gets allocated to. And so whatever Mesos node it gets allocated, not, yes. not a Spark. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and we can have our dev uh, configuration. By the way, dev, I really suggest that, uh, and I'll show you my workflow in a moment, that you work with the local uh, Spark master, although mm -hmm. I'm running on, on a Mesos cluster. Running Spark on Mesos is, is resource consuming on my very strong, this is not my very strong Mac, but, <laughs> but on my very strong Mac, it still, it still takes, consumes all the resources that I can have. You can work with local files, which really speeds up everything. Um, and, and yes, you can have your configuration to support it. So, um, a little bit about configuration. Uh, basically, in your, um, in your environment, it's under the same, in Scala, it's under the same namespace. So you just get env, which allow you to access all the different configurations. And you can use it in your, in your code. And get whatever you want. Um, the DSL in Python in R obviously looks a little bit different, but um, yeah, I think we're going to Okay, so um, we have a very simplistic uh, workflow here. It's actually the same example as we've shown you in the slides. So, uh, this is our workflow. <coughs> Can you hold this? <laughs> no? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so because AL doesn't use Vim, I'll have to get out of Vim and open one of the actions. So if I go into SRC, or even better, let's just. So this is our. Uh, Amaterasu repo, we have the YAML, we have the env uh, folder, and we have the source folder. So, if we do theme, and I have here both of the source files, so, so you can see this is, and as I told you, I actually don't need the AMA context to access the Spark context, I can actually do this. And file two looks like this. So here, all I have is a Mesos cluster and Amaterasu. Okay, so um, I have Amaterasu, which is uh, basically a, right now a bunch of binaries and a script called Amastar. Uh, this is also going to slightly change. We're going to have a, a, a better command line tool. And Amastar takes these parameters or these arguments. First of all, the repo. The repo right now, everything is running from my, from here, from GitHub. Um, you can use whatever uh, Git URI is, which is accessible from your uh, cluster. The environment, I'm going to use the test environment and this switch code actually uh, 
um, let me set the verbosity of report I want to have back to the console when I'm running this. I'm also running on, a, on, the, manch, uh, on the master branch. So if I run this, Amaterasu starts running. First thing it does is actually pulling the repo from GitHub and it will create our workflow. Can you move a bit? Yes. We'll create a workflow and start executing it. And as it's being executed, we can see that everything is green and we get the report and this is cool. Obviously, <laughs> if you're running this from, from Crontab or Kronos or whatever you want to use for scheduling, you don't need the, this report. Everything in this report is actually being logged. So um, if you want to have that going into your Elk or whatever you're using to see those logs, you can have that and you don't need to actually print it to the screen. Um, and <coughs> Thank you. Um, so I want to show helpful. you... <laughs> Very helpful. I want to show you uh, a little bit the workflow that I use with Amaterasu. So I, I use feature branches for everything I do. Um, so let's do. <coughs> no, master. Okay, so I have this new branch. Um, it's a bit bigger repo. You just don't see what you're typing right now. Sorry. Better? Uh, I think so. Okay. So, um, okay, so if we're looking at this workflow, you can see that I actually have a, an error handling action. This is my error handling action. Basically, what I'm doing is uh, I forgot to start the Slack client. We'll do that in a moment. But basically, what I'm doing, I'm using the Slack client to uh, uh, to post a message when something fails. Okay, and I'm also using end configuration. I'm just getting a key called error message. By the way, if you wonder why it's slightly different from what's in the slides, the slides are already in the new version, so there are some small differences. Um, let's take a look at... File 2, and... Can we'll you make spot the error? <laughs> By the way, a very common error in, in machine learning modeling. So, we have an error, so... We know we'll fail. And actually, we already it's already pushed into GitHub. So what I can do now is run the same job, only on a different branch. But before I do that, do you have a Slack client installed? Okay. We'll run this, we'll just see that it executes. And again, we're pulling our repository from GitHub. I just want to, to point out, uh, this is the type of, of things that we want to implement in Amaterasu. Uh, Software developers know how to use branches to develop software. We, we branch out from the master, we develop, we test, and we push it back. Um, when working with data pipelines, it's not often to see uh, uh, all the teams doing the same thing. Uh, as consultants, we, we go to different teams and every team tries to reinvent the wheel. Uh, we have different people doing having the same problem but solving it differently. What we thought about is taking the, the methodology of, of how to develop software and bring it to the data processing world. 
And using feature branching is one of those things that we know to do how in software uh, development, in application development, and now we want to do that uh, developing uh, data pipelines. Okay, so we're failing uh, right now three times, which is the default configuration and um, something that you'll be able to set. But once we failed three times, okay, our error handling uh, um, action is executing and we're sending a message because we forgot about the little detail of installing the Slack client. I'll just show you a couple, a couple of things. So first of all, in and test okay so in our configuration we have the error message which is uh, um, to make errors human to propagate error to all server automatic way is DevOps by DevOps board uh, okay. which is always important when you're automating things to remember um, but we also used uh, a library, a Slack, a Slack client, and I want to talk to you about what's that all about. So we have under depths a file called jars.yaml. <laughs> okay, and in this version, in the first preview version, we have only this option which allows us to specify Maven dependency basically. So we're adding the repositories and the artifacts in YAML, and this is this is actually something that we needed in the project that, that actually Amaterasu was incepted in because we needed to pull dependencies into our pipeline. And those dependencies, um, we also wanted to manage the versions that we're using and everything. Another thing about those dependencies is that although in our action we're not using Spark, it's not doing anything, we actually add those as the, as the jar dependencies for Spark. For Spark. So uh, uh, Spark context is aware of that and if you're using them in your executors then they're still available. We make sure that they're available across the cluster and this is something that we want to build for every framework that we're supporting. Um, in the next version we'll have pip for, uh, for Python and we will have uh, cron for, uh, for R. Okay, so those are our demos. And now we want to talk to you a little bit about where we are right now, which is uh, uh, the middle of development for version 0 to, to 0, and where we're we going. So first of all, and very important for us, uh, we're applying for Apache incubation. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, we're, we're actually working on the proposal these days, and we're going to submit it, hopefully, if God and my wife permits uh, in the next couple of weeks. Um, Yarn support is in the works. It's a big thing for us. Um, Although we didn't uh, uh, want to go to Yarn, uh, eventually Yarn is in production currently. <laughs> Yarn, Yarn, Yarn uh, every, every client that, that talks to us that want to implement Amtrax Yarn is almost immediately the first uh, request. Python is uh, is nearing the end of the development. SQL is also almost complete, and you'll have a YAML uh, action that can have a SQL query and a file. And right now, in this version, it will use Spark SQL to create a data frame. But this also gives us the opportunity in future versions to implement things like Hive and Drill, which are uh, already on Kirupa's uh, roadmap. Kirupa is the contributor that works on SQL. Uh, R, if God and Yael's wife permits, will be ready for next <laughs> version. Um, uh, In running including CRAN support. Yes. Uh, of course, and Python will be. Uh, environments, as I said, gonna, going to support YAML as well. We're going to keep JSON uh, for shits and giggles, but uh, um, uh, we don't know if we're going to end up exporting those into uh, an external store or keep it. Um, but we also want to support um, 
the ability to just drop in complete Spark configuration and apply that. So as I said, we're using Mesos to bootstrap your Spark clusters. Right now, you can configure very little about Spark clusters. We want you to just take the, the, the conf library that you work with, drop it into Amaterasu into an environment folder, and that will be your configuration for Spark. Um, Spark are not making our life any easy with that, but, but we're going there. Uh, we're looking at doing better toolings, um, apparently UI is a thing, and uh, people want that. Um, DCOS package is something that we're also, we've started to work right now, we kind of got into, a, um, um, it's on the back burners, we have bigger, uh, uh, bigger issues, and we are looking at other frameworks. Not in version 0 to 0, but definitely Flink, as I said, at Beam, as I said, and Flink through that. Hive, definitely, and, and those. And the last thing that is, um, is going to be a, a massive development for us is having test workflows. So we want to have workflows that are real tests, and you can have a data set in, as input, and you can have uh, um, assertions at the end of the of the workflow when you can test parts of your of your uh, pipeline and have actual real integration tests for data pipelines um, I think that's that's all up oh, and CLI tools and there are several things that we're talking about but those are in the new future so that's Amaterasu are we good with times? Yeah, we're good I think do okay. you have cool. questions? Yeah, now is a good time for questions. Yeah. Yes. Hmm? How can I use what are, what are the licenses of the Amaterasu? Amaterasu is... Repeat the question. <laughs> uh, Apache 2. So we're going to Apache, hopefully Apache incubation. Apache 2 is the license that we're going to uh, support from the start. There is also... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay, there's... Um, maybe better than that, there is... Uh, we have a slide. We have a slide for that. We have a slide for getting started. So we have a website. There's a blog post that goes in very detail on how to set up your first Amaterasu job right now on Mesos. And we also have a, um, a Vagrant machine that you can set up a single node cluster if you don't have a Mesos uh, a, a node. Um, how to download, how to set up everything in that in the only blog post in our website right now. Um, you can go to the GitHub, github.com slash Shinto.io and we also have our Slack channel. Right now, if you want to register to Slack, just send us an email on info at Shinto.io and we'll gladly add you. So, uh, uh, that's it. That's it. Thank you.